You mentioned earlier about uh, not going to the hospital, like that. How, how you wouldn't want to go to the hospital if you had COVID. What was the reason for that? Well, um, just first of all, just just basic comfort. Um, once you once you leave your own home, imagine you know you're feeling shitty already. Now you got to go down to the hospital, you sit in the hallway, people are gonna be coughing up, and you're gonna be in fear for your life. So if you can avoid being so sick that you think you need to go to the hospital. Um, that's a good thing. And what happened to me really recently was fascinating. I had COVID and I had a very mild effect on it. Um, and I felt great after a couple of days, but I injured my toe snowboarding. And after 10 years, that same snowboarding boot must have had some nasty stuff in there. I got a really bad infection. Mm-hmm. And it got so bad that I thought I maybe should go in for an IV vancomycin infusion because I don't want to lose my toe. It was starting to be really painful. And I thought, I do not want to go to the hospital because everyone's there for COVID. I'm going to walk in with my toe. You know, that's not going to be great. And, you know, this is bad. There are people with, you know, my toe is no big deal, but people with real health issues are afraid to go to the hospital because they're just overflowing with COVID. So if you can do something that's non-toxic at any level, and simple. And you can send somebody out to the grocery store, to the corner store and get vitamin D. And in as little as three days, you can have a a huge result, antiviral. It will lower the viral load. It will lower your symptoms. If you can do that, you want to do that. You do not want to go to the hospital. The people who are doing, they're doing their best at the hospital, but I want you to know that when you go to the hospital, they don't test your vitamin D level and they don't give you any vitamin D, not here in America. And I was on some emails where one of the doctors at a hospital said, Hey guys, um, big pharma is not letting us check vitamin D levels. And they said, just like that. And it was a high level doctor. So, This whole stuff with all the vaccines and everything, I want people to get vaccines who are elderly, who are immunocompromised. But if you can bolster your own immune system and avoid, I get a vaccine, they're going to make you get it every three months, every six months. This is a money-making thing. It's not a scam. Coronavirus is real. But I don't want to do these unnatural things. We are designed to be able to fight off a virus, but not if your doctor doesn't know about a massive part of your immune system. It's ridiculous. Could a lot of people have avoided getting the coronavirus if the vitamin D levels were sufficient? Do you believe? One hundred percent. Not only do I believe it, there's so many studies that support this. There are thousands. There's a lot of new studies out there right now, um, and it's not just the coronavirus; it's every virus. And then it's the secondary bacterial lung infection. So you hear you are immunocompromised. You don't know your vitamin D level because your doctor never tested it and you're taking your multivitamin and it has 600 IU, which is the RDA. So you're good. You also drink milk and juice. You have no reason to be thinking, oh, well, I really need more vitamin D. Then you have this viral disease that wrecks you. And then why do you get a secondary uh, bacterial lung infection? Because your body can't fight it off. And the bacteria that are a normal part of your lungs overgrow, just like the wrong microbiome anywhere in your lung and your body anywhere. Vitamin D regulates the antiviral, antimicrobial systems. It regulates T cells and B cells and neutrophils. It regulates them. When those cells don't have enough vitamin D, they cannot copy the genes inside of them. Your immune cells function by utilizing the DNA, the blueprint that's inside of them. Those cells copy those genes and produce chemicals. If those cells don't have enough vitamin D, your own defense system can't work. And that's why people who have very low vitamin D also do not have a good result with getting the vaccine. That's real. They're going to start probably giving vitamin D with the vaccine, which, you know, definitely great because people are really sick. But we're really in a bad place. I've been working on this for quite a while. When COVID hit, me and all my vitamin D friends were like, oh shit, is this really like, you know, and I was waiting. I don't want to say it's just vitamin D. It's not just vitamin D. Vitamin D is a massive component of this. Why? It regulates the gut microbiome. It regulates your immune cells. It regulates your sleep and your sleep cycle. If you're not sleeping, you're not healthy. You're going to get sick. If somebody... If somebody were to test positive, would they need like a heavy dose of vitamin D to kind of kick things off or just keep the, uh, the traditional like rule of rule of thumb, like you said. Right. Can I say, Oh fuck. Yeah. They need to take a lot more vitamin D immediately. (laughs) You want a loading dose. And when I, so I have videos that show me taking a hundred thousand value vitamin D on camera and I don't die. I said, like I said today, I posted on my Instagram uh, feed at modernhuntergatherers.com what to do if you get diagnosed positive with COVID and you haven't been supplementing. Yes, you want to take a massive loading dose. If you're nervous, take 20,000 in the morning, take 20,000 with lunch, take 20,000 with dinner, take 20,000 before bed, take your K2, take your magnesium and do it all again the next day. The study that came out today showed that 400,000 IU 
given all at one time, was extremely effective at decreasing the coronavirus symptoms. So if you get COVID and you're really sick, take two, three, four hundred thousand IU, but take it with some K2 and magnesium and take it with food and don't panic. You cannot kill yourself. 500,000 IU is not toxic on any level. There was um, a while back, I heard this guy, smart guy who was doing for surgery, he was injecting his patients with a million IU of vitamin D three days before surgery. So they wouldn't get post-op infections. What? That guy never got his information out. That's real. And, and that's what I would want. Hospital infections. What, who, who do you think gets flesh-eating bacteria? Who do you think gets MRSA? I had MRSA twice. MRSA is methicillin resistant staph aureus. That's a bacteria that 30 to 40% of people have in their nose normally. When does it go onto your skin? When your vitamin D level drops and your immune system shuts down. I had it twice. And none of my doctors said, hey, what's your vitamin D level? And I couldn't figure out why was this happening to me? Uh, you know, it was insane. My vitamin D level was so low that I had I had giant abscesses on me and it was dangerous. This can transform into flesh-eating bacteria. I had a patient who had flesh-eating bacteria. She lost her jaw. We measured her vitamin D level. And this is long after that. Her level was nine. That's low. You want to have a level over 30, 40, 50. So yeah, this is, you should immediately. Now, if you've been supplementing a good amount of vitamin D, like 5,000 IU for at least three months, you don't need to panic as much. You can still take a higher dose. If you run your level up to 100, 150, 200, there's no toxic effects. Past 300, you're going to get nauseous. Mm. Okay. Show me the people who are dying from overdoses of vitamin D. Now, here you are. You're alone, you're isolated, you've been isolated for a long time, and now you're sick and you're thinking, oh my God, what the hell's gonna happen to me? You can take a massive dose, take 100,000, take 300,000, it doesn't matter. Go to my YouTube channel, look at some of my protocols. This is the easiest thing in the world, and it's tragic to me that people are dying. Families are dying because their doctors did not learn about this, and they have not researched it on their own. It's outrageous. Before, it was bad, it was bad enough that I wasted my life in bathrooms and being fat, but now people are dying over this. This is ridiculous. Doc, um, are the studies, like the study you just mentioned that came in today, is that stuff on your website? Because like, I know a lot of people are hearing some of the things you're saying and we want to be able to give them like the information you're talking about because a lot of it's really important. So is it on your website? Um, I have a lot of vitamin D studies on my website. I have links, but I, I will, when, when we're done with this, I will email you directly today a link with the top eight or 10 studies Please. on COVID and vitamin D. And the one that showed that 300,000 IU of vitamin D was not only safe and non-toxic, but it reduced immediately the symptoms. When you take vitamin D, it takes about three days for it really to get everywhere it needs to go. Mm -hmm. the, okay. the, by the time it gets activated by your liver and all that. So um, yeah, these, and these studies are available. There's a, a great website called vitamin D wiki. And it's done, it's run by a guy named Henry Lahore, and he's a super cool guy. He has put every study, so anyone can look at it right now, um, Vitamin D Wiki, and then he'll have all the latest studies, and he kind of interprets them for you, shows them, there's direct links to them, but for the average person, looking through studies on PubMed is kind of difficult. He summarizes them, he puts them together in categories, and he has all the latest stats on COVID. I'm on an email uh, back and forth of the 50 of the top Vitamin D experts, and God love them. They are some of the best people in the world. They're like, oh, the British Parliament is talking about this, and it's gonna. People are gonna figure it out. They're not gonna figure it out. It's, it's shows like this that are gonna make the difference. It's someone like me saying, look, guys, we, we've been deceived. This is bullshit. And I have over thirty years' experience as a clinician in two countries. I have a degree. I have a doctorate of dental surgery. And I can do research just like everyone. This isn't even some mystery. This is obvious. It's it's really it's really tragic. 